When you need help or advice, you turn to your parents or a trusted friend for help. So why go outside of Virginia, your home, when you need car insurance? Abra Insurance gives you individual attention and won't turn your way no matter what your driving record looks like. Giving same-day personal service in the state of Virginia for over 30 years. Able Insurance, 979-0814 is the number. AbleInsurance.com is the site. What up, what up, what up, the Ballhawk Show? Say one more time. What up, what up, what up, the Ballhawk Show? What up, what up, what up, what up? What up, though? Welcome to the Ball Hawk Show podcast. I'm your host, Ahmad Hawkins, and I appreciate you for taking time out of your day to listen to the latest episode of the show. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the Ball Hawk Show podcast on so many different platforms. Apple Podcasts, make sure you subscribe. Google Play, make sure you subscribe. Podbean, Blog Talk Radio, subscribe. Uh, YouTube, subscribe to the channel. Uh, tune in app follow the ball hawk show follow me on twitter at i am ball hawk and follow me on instagram at i am ball hawk and also follow me on anchor the ball hawk show podcast is now available on anchor and it's also available on spotify i'm gonna try to get to every platform that i can to make sure you guys can hear my voice so we can get this voice on the tizzoo and get it on tv you know what i'm saying so we're working on that so um, let's go ahead and jump into it, man. This episode, we will recap the Virginia Cavaliers versus the Louisville Cardinals that played this past Saturday. Apologize if I didn't release this podcast, record it on Sunday and, and get it out to you. But hey, I just waited until Monday. Good thing I did wait because the new top 25 rankings, the Wahoos, are now number two. Uh, the team that's above them, Gonzaga, actually beat Duke, the team that beat us twice. So I can understand. You know, that those way of thinking, I understand that we beat so many teams that's ranked this year and beat so many teams that's ranked on the road. But um, at the end of the day, man, the Wahoos, Wahoo Nation, we've, you know, been in that boat to where our team was number one and, and saw them do what they did last year as far as running the table in the ACC, then winning the tournament. Um, but we got bigger fish to fry, man. We're trying to get to that natty. We're trying to win that natty right now. And we're trying to make sure Jay Huff get more minutes. Ain't that right, Wahoo Nation? Y'all know you boys enjoyed this Louisville game. All the Jay Huff Unicorn Club fans was out and about ready for that smoke. Talking about I told you, I told you. The I told you club came out of there. All you armchair coaches stood up with your I told you so shirts. And y'all said I told you, I told you. Just play Jay Huff, I told you. And Jay Huff did not let you. The one thing about Jay Huff, he's not going to disappoint you. He's not going to disappoint you. And that's the one thing I always want to make sure that I always communicate. Anytime a player steps on the floor, I want them to succeed. I don't get into that, see, this is why this kid shouldn't play, this is why this kid shouldn't No. Regardless who on the floor, I need them to play to the best of their ability so they can achieve the goals that they set for themselves to better help the team achieve the goal that's been set for them. So um, if you're new to the show, I usually start with some game notes, get into some individual stats and team stats, and then – I break down what happened in the game, and then we usually have a shut the hell up juice moment, a.k.a. the soapbox moment, uh, to where I may address some things I see on social media or I may answer a question that is emailed to me at theballhawk9 at gmail.com if you ever want to send me a question or suggestion or a topic. So let's go ahead and jump right into the post-game notes. The Cavaliers defeated Louisville by a score 64 to 52. Some team notes courtesy of VirginiaSports.com. Jeff White and the great people at VirginiaSports.com. Um, some team notes. Uh, Virginia is now 24 and 2 and 12 and 2 in the ACC. It extended its school record for top 25 road wins to five and set a new record with its fourth ranked road win in league play. Um, the, the record was three in 1981. 
UVA is eight and one versus ranked opponents this year. Both losses to Duke. UVA is nine and one in true road games this year. The Cavaliers own a eight game winning streak versus Louisville, including a four game winning streak at the KFC Yum Center. UVA is fourteen and four all time versus Louisville in a series that that began in 1923-1924 season. Louisville went on a 9-0 run to gain a 25-12 lead before UVA answered with a, with its own 8-0 run. The Cardinals made 10 of 16 three-pointers in the first half to gain that 37-27 halftime lead. UVA's 27 first-half points tied a season low. The Cavaliers gained their first lead at 49-47 with 8.45 left in the second half. UVA has held Louisville to 59 or fewer points in eight of the 10 contests since the Cardinals joined the ACC in the 2014-2015 season. Head coach Tony Bennett is 9-1 all-time versus Louisville. UVA outscored Louisville 38-4 in the paint and owned a 26-15 advantage in bench points. Some player notes, double-figure scores were DeAndre Hunter, Mamne Diakite and Jay Huff. So DeAndre Hunter was still there, but the usually other other three headed monsters is usually Ty Jerome and Cal Guy. Uh, but Mamne Diakite and Jay Huff did a great job of sparking us and allowing us to uh, stay afloat until DeAndre Hunter went absolutely bananas in the second half. Hunter had a career high 26 points, including 19 in the second half. See, right on cue. 19 in the second half for the Hunter, the lottery pick. Oh, no, he about to go pick. Cal guys, 25 game, three-pointer streak ended. That was hard to see that end. I think that was the first game he didn't hit a three-pointer since, yeah, that game for the NCAAs. I don't even want to say their name anymore, that team. Uh, guy matched a career high with eight rebounds, and Mom Nadia Kite had three blocks and extended his block streak to 19 games. So we're going to the box scores right now. We'll check out. What the Wahoos did individually. DeAndre Hunter, as I talked about, 26 points to lead the way. Only played 27 minutes. Uh, got a second foul with like nine minutes left in the first half. Coach Bennett is a guy that's going to sit you with your second foul. He'll rather you have three fouls in the second half no matter what. That's his principles. That's what he sticks to. A lot of people don't agree with it. A lot of people say, hey, he's not trusting his players. But him, he's going to make sure he take any risk out of it. And the players understand that. So, if you get two quick fouls, you're sitting the whole first half, and that's just Coach Tony Bennett. Um, he was 9-11 from the field, 2-for-2 two two from the three-point land, 6-6 six six from the free throw line, four rebounds, just one turnover, one block, and two steals. Um, he had the uh, Bradley Bill dribble treatment on that steal. Oh, my God. I mean, I don't know the rules anymore as far as what is a double dribble, what is, what is a, a travel, but it worked in our favor, and I'm not going to complain, but it sure was funny because I was just teasing the Washington Wizard fans about Bradley Bill when he traveled across America and they didn't call it, and I be day going to DeAndre Hunter. Almost did the same thing and then got an and one, but DeAndre Hunter, this was the most efficient game I've seen him ever play. Just – he missed two shots, fam. Nine of eleven from the field. Nine of eleven. He was he 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 went crazy that second half. He 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 showed why he's high on a lot of people's draft boards because it's nothing that stop like he's not a ball stopper. When he gets the ball, he's very decisive. He understands the spot of the court that he wants to get to. He pays attention to how his defender is shading him when he has them leaning. When And he always has great balance when he shoots the basketball. And I love the fact that he's stronger now. He put on like 5 to 10 pounds of muscle. He got shoulders like he's Dwight Howard right now. And I just love the way he's playing the game. And then you have Cal Guy. He played all 40 minutes yet again. I don't want to say this part like the third straight game. He's played all 40 minutes. He was just 2 of 8 from the field, 0 for 5 from the floor. I mean, from the three-point land. Four for four for the free throw line. We talked about the eight rebounds. He had three assists to just one turnover. Eight total points. Ty Jerome had four total points. He played 38 of the possible 40 minutes. Two for 12 from the field. O for six from three. So our two snipers were 0 for 11 from three-point land. Uh, Ty Jerome had four rebounds. He also had five assists to just one turnover. Um, and then you had Braxton Key who got the start. 
even though he got the start, he only played 10 minutes. He was 0 for 2 from the field, just one rebound, one block, had one personal foul, did not register a single point. Jack Salt, our other starter, he only played five minutes, uh, just one attempt on an up and under move. He tried to finish with his right hand and he missed. One rebound, one personal foul. Um, so Braxton Key and Jack Salt combined for 15 minutes, even though they were the starters. And then you look at a guy like Mamdi Diakite, played 32 minutes. He was 7 to 10 from the field, five rebounds, three blocks, 14 points. And the one thing I love about Mamdi was that we didn't have to double on the block because he was shutting it down. He was shutting it down. Anytime one of their bigs got the ball on the block and wanted to try to bully Mamdi, ah, 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 not today. He was blocking it, SWAT team, stuffing him. And uh, Mamdi is a guy that if he's hitting on all cylinders, you, I don't care who the opposing four is or five. I'm confident with this kid because the one thing I love about Mamdi is he gets off the floor very fast. Um, if he doesn't fall for any pump fakes and he doesn't do anything silly, he can actually allow the offensive guy to elevate and get to their highest point, release point, and he can elevate higher than them and swat their attempt. Uh, Jay Huff, the unicorn, came in. He subbed in when we were very dormant. Um, and he got – I mean, he showed a different repertoire. You know, the jump hooks at 7-1. That's one thing Jay Huff wasn't really showing his back to the basket because the game has changed now. Everybody's face up. Everybody's a stretch. Everybody has to show the threat of shooting a three-point ball. And we know Jay Huff could jump out the gym, and we know he could shoot the three-point ball. But what can you do when you're required to be a true big man? What is your touch around the rim? And that's the one thing that I was very encouraged by you know, seeing from him, that he showed a wrinkle, a wrinkle that I think even Louisville wasn't prepared for because nobody truly has, has seen – his ability to have a jump hook and having a nice touch around the rim. We all know he could catch oops. That's why I love the fact that Kihei Clark is diminutive. So here's a young man that understands and probably having a connection with being with the second group in practice. He probably has a nice uh, rapport with a Jay Huff um, because that alley you not only see the alley you from the three point line, you know, Jay's by himself. So you throw it around the rim, Jay being a super athlete like he is. Dunked it backwards, right? But when Kehi, well, Kihei passed up on the elbow three and took two dribbles towards the baseline because everybody knows he's been struggling shooting the basketball. And this is one thing I love about Kihei. And while we're talking about Kihei, 31 minutes, 0 for 4 from the field, 0 for 2 from 3. Uh, the first three was in and out. Both threes that he shot was low in the shot clock. You know, he got the ball late in the shot clock, and he had to shoot him. Um he had five rebounds, four assists, zero turnovers. He did not score. But back to Kihei. He passed up on the right elbow uh, three-point shot in the first half, took two dribbles, and saw the unicorn in the paint. And he understands that J-Hub loves to dunk and loves to scream. So why not throw it up for my seven-foot-one super athletic center to be the only one that could go get it? And that's what he did. And here's a young man who's just a freshman that's struggling um, he's not a fan favorite as far as a lot of these over analytical, uh, over analytical, over analytical fan base that we have as far as his inefficient inefficiencies to to score and using the plus minus and all these advanced analytics that kind of give me a headache because it kind of takes away for the pure essence of the game when you look at these advanced analytics and I'll get more into that a little later. But it was good to see Kihei just playing within himself and understanding that. Even though you've been struggling with your shot, you got to try to still play aggressive. Um, he got an offensive rebound this game, and he tried to go right back up. And the kid, uh, number 30, smacked the shot, um, McMahon, from behind. And then he had another layup where he beat him off the ball, and he just missed it. So he was showing that he was being aggressive. But 31 minutes out of Kihei Clark, 17 minutes out of Huff, and 32 minutes out of the Akite. So that's... What, 80? That's 80 minutes between three bench players. And that, you know, they played, you know, extended minutes because DeAndre was in foul trouble. So you look at the first half of the Who's, 38% from the field, 0 for 11 from three in the first half, and it was only down by 10. 
So, you know, you shoot 38% in the first half. You got uh, Louisville shooting 44% from the field. They shoot 62% from three. They only hit one non-three-pointer all all first half. They hit 10 threes and the rest were free throws and hit. And one guy had a midi, and I think it was Cunningham. But other than that, they either hit threes or they hit free throws. They had five or six from the free throw line. Then in the second half, when we switched rims, we got the favorable rim that was like the ocean. We shot 59% from uh, the field in the second half. We still didn't shoot good from three at all. We were just two or six, and DeAndre hit both of those three-pointers. But then on the flip side, when you look at um, Louisville in the second half, they shot 20% from the field, just 11% from the three. So we could pretty much say that that end of the floor is the broken side. Because we shot 38% in the first half. They turned around and shot 20% in the second half on that goal. But then when you look at the positive side, the goal they had in the first half where they shot 62% from three and 44 from the field, we shot 59 from the field and 33 from three-point land. Um, of course, anytime Virginia outscores somebody 38-4 to four in the paint, that's showing that they're being super aggressive. They're not settling. Um, we're a team that's been – that's one of the best three-point teams. We actually number two in the ACC at three-point field goal percentage, and we only shot 11% from three from the game, just 12 or 33. Uh, we had 2018 total rebounds. No, 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 that was them. That was them. We shot actually 11%. Oh, that's what I said. Yeah, I was right. We shot 11% for three. We had 39 total rebounds, so they had 28. Uh, we turned the ball over five times. They turned the ball over five times. Uh, we had 12 total assists as a team. They had 10 total assists and points off of turnovers. They had seven points off of turnovers. We had nine points off of turnovers. Ten second chance points. They had four second chance points. So, um, yeah, man, it was just it was just a tale of two halves of this game. When DeAndre went down, it was good to see Diakite come in, like I said, and Huff come in. In the second half, I noticed that we played – we start, We ran a lot of 1-4 high. Louisville played a lot of 1-3-1 zone. We missed open shots in the first half. Um, the second half, we were cognizant of rather settling for jump shots, of getting to the cup. And, they, you know, they were sprinkling in, man, sprinkling in that 1-3 zone. I think the fact that DeAndre was being so aggressive and, and we were crashing the boards and we wasn't settling for jumpers made them uneasy because they play a, a sort of a version of a pack line defense, and I heard the commentators talking about that. Uh, I just felt like we did a great job with our ball movement and understanding that our block mover offense probably wasn't favorable versus their defense. So we went to continuity, 1-4 uh, high look. We had guys in. Uh, the, the threat of shooting, you know, the threat of Huff being at the three-point line, the, the big has to step out. Um, even though people don't like, you know, um, feel like Kihei can't really shoot. I always say this, man. You may think the kid can't shoot, but I've yet to see a team treat him like a Ben Simmons or treat him like a Rondo to where they just dare him to shoot. You know, the, the, the two threes that he did take were late in the shot clock, like I said, and it was off a screen on the elbow, and it was good looks. The first one went all the way down and out. So they were good looks. They looked good. Like his shot didn't look like he was nervous or he was aiming. They were fluid shots, and he just missed them. And that's the thing about basketball is, like, we pick and choose who we're going to say keep shooting and who we're going to say, oh, they don't need to shoot. And my thing is this. You got to play within the scheme of things and within the rhythm of things. If the ball is flowing and you get the open shot, if you're showing you're hesitant, then – I feel like fans are going to get on a player for being hesitant also. As long as it, the shot looks fluid and they're not pressing or aiming, you live with it. That's basketball. You're not going to make every shot. Um, as our, our two sh snipers struggled, they continued to play. You know, they adjusted. Cal guy started going to the cup. Uh, Ty Jerome started going with his patented floater. And um, we did what we had to do. Louisville is a, is a team that can be a tough out just because – they have so much potential. It's just that mentally they they, they get fried. And as, it almost starts from – I always say players are extension to their head coach. If you paid attention to their head coach on the sideline, you can understand how Louisville can have laps in the game and lose concentration because he becomes unraveled a lot, cussing and fussing and storming around. And that composure 
that lack of composure filters onto the floor. And I think that's the one thing about UVA is that, yeah, we were struggling in the first half, but you never saw us really pressing and fussing at each other. You can seem to see Coach Bennett and his assistants collaboratively, collaboratively talking things out and trying to figure out, you know, who should be in the game. What's the offensive sets we need to be running? And you could just see them saying, you know what, we're getting the looks that we need to get. It's a couple of times that we forced the ball to Cal Guy late in the shot clock and it was bad passes and he had to shoot from his hip. But for the most part, we were just missing shots. And you could just tell he probably went to the locker room, Coach Tony Bennett is what I'm talking about, and just, you know, challenge them. Challenge them to be sound. Challenge them to take advantage of opportunities that are presented that Louisville is basically leaving us open for shots and it's more of us. It's not what they're doing. And that the threes that they were hitting, it was because we weren't fully getting out there to recover and contest it. Our hands were actually by their chest instead of being up high in the eyesight. Um, I, I saw Coach Bennett say that it had, in, in one of the timeouts. He was just like, you. Ha- he told, I think it was either Cal Guy or Ty Jerome, like you got to get extend your hand all the way up. Like you're there, but you got to really get there. Get your hand all the way up. No fussing, no cussing, no being disrespectful and demeaning his player, but just imploring, like, look, yes, the shot was tough, but you could have still did more to where if they do make the shot and you're there, I could live with it. So, um, yeah, man, that's what I saw from this game. I just saw a tell of two halves. I saw DeAndre Hunter just demonstrate why he is NBA ready. Um, he had a lottery pick. The kid just continues to improve, continue to know when to turn it on and, and lead by example. Um, he starts at the defensive end with steals. He's always in his kill zone area. He could pop out and hit the three, but he understands what his strengths are. And then you got a guy like Jay Huff just trying to find minutes for Jay Huff. Uh, Braxton Key was the odd man out today. And I've been telling the folks, when it comes to Jay Huff getting minutes, he shares minutes with Diakite. Braxton Key and or Jack Salt. I just feel like Jack Salt's going to play 15 minutes tops, you know, majority of the time with our matchups. He only played five. So it, it, it's okay. Um, but, you know, with the foul trouble that DeAndre Hunter was in, it helped add additional minutes to a Jay Huff. And then Jay took advantage of him. He had 12 points in just 17 minutes. Stayed around the rim. Um, allow his athleticism and the size to really play a factor. I saw him playing stronger on the boards, ripping balls. I, I saw him blocking shots. I thought he was better with his, his ability to rotate and recover, um, his communication. And, and that's what we want. So um, I, I love what we got of Jay Huff. And I'm glad he got extended minutes. And I'm pretty sure they're going to look at this film. He's going to reevaluate this film. And he's going to address what, what, else he needs, what else he needs to do in practice. Um, I don't care who starts. I, I just feel like coach always seems to find the right rotation at the right time. And, and us as fans, we get our favorites and we have players that we love to back and we have players that we rather see succeed compared to others because we feel like, hey, I've been saying this about this player from day one. So we have that emotional attachment, right? And was, sometimes we may not know we might be disrespecting the player to the right that – we're trying to basically push down to elevate our favorite. And I just don't want – and our fan base for that to really come to light. You know what I'm saying? Because the players pay attention to what we say as fans, and they take it to heart because we are their family. So, um, Jay Huff, man, definitely happy for him. And if you're a Jay Huff supporter, man, pat yourself on the back. This is your day to say I told you so, definitely. Because um, at the end of the day, the most important thing is the Wahoos won. That never gets lost in sight. Point number two is we understand where where we came from before Coach Bennett got here in the first few years to now. Um, And we understand the transition we are making as a program from being, you know, mid-tier to top-tier. Now the expectations are different. You won the ACC regular. You won the ACC tournament. You've been to the Sweet 16. Now it's like, yo, you need to start getting to the Final Four and you need to start getting to the National Championship and competing on those two levels. And that's that's why I think the majority of the fan base is coming from where they look at, you know, the rotation and how come this guy's not playing. And when you look at the plus minus and we look at this in advanced analytics per 40 minutes and per 100 possessions. And I always say men lie, women lie, numbers don't, but all three can be manipulated, if that makes sense. 
we can all manipulate numbers to fit our narrative. That's the great thing about debating. You can find certain analytics that are going to show on the surface that, oh, you're right. But then when you look at it as a game, because somebody made a great point, right? Say, you know, Kihei Clark, if you're looking at the game and reviewing the game and you really under, and paid attention, Kihei Clark played a good game. But then when you look at these event analytics, he's like, what? A negative plus, plus negative was negative 27, was minus 27? You feel what I'm saying? So if you're just looking at numbers and data all the time, you're saying there's no way this kid should be playing, there's no way that kid should be playing. But if you just took that data out of there first and just looked at the film and just said, what is your eyes telling you when you're watching the film and the outcome and the floor of the game and what this player does defensively and how he impacts another team getting into their offensive floor or this, this guy when he's on the floor, how do our shooters get free? It's just so many things that I always say advanced analytics can't tell you. And when I, what I mean by that is a coach doesn't have the luxury of being on the bench looking at a clipboard of real-time advanced analytics. You know, it's not like we could hit the pause sign and on 2K and go to the roster and see plus minus which lineup I got in is giving my opponent fits. Okay, I'm going to put everybody that got plus 10 or plus 15. I'm going to make sure they're on the floor. It doesn't work like that. So that's why I always kind of – take a step back when people throw out advanced analytics because that's a luxury for after the fact that's a luxury for something you can refer to and then try to compare those that data to the film like you could get that advanced analytics from the game and then you go back and look get, look at the game and say all right so how did it what 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 formula are they using to get this number because what i'm seeing right now is yeah Offensively, it may not be what we want as far as scoring, but just the spacing and the movement and get, drawing folks. And, I mean, just so many things that come into play. And I ain't going to talk y'all head off about it, but I just wanted to let folks know that I'm a, I'm a person that I welcome all information and all data. But it's all about what you feel in your gut and what you know about the game and who's taught you the game and who you listen to to where you're going to side when it comes to analytics and film review and old being old school, new school. I'm not a Charles Barkley type guy and say, you know, those are for, for the nerds. No, I appreciate the advanced analytics because it gives you an idea, but then again, they can be slanted to a certain and can fit a certain narrative. And if you get too, too caught up in advanced analytics, you'll see that a lot of people you think is your favorite and you think is the best aren't the best according to those analytics. So, all right, man. Get off my high horse, man. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel, man. Thank you for listening. Make sure you go to sthujuice.com for your Shut the Hell Up Juice apparel. I appreciate anybody that's purchased and been to the store and visited the store. Um, and if you ever have any questions, any topics you want me to talk about, or you just want to, you know, have a cordial conversation, email me, theballhawk9 at gmail.com. Again, my email is theballhawk9 at gmail.com. Salute to my sponsor, Aver Insurance. Been with the Ballhawk Show from day one. If you want to be a sponsor of the Ballhawk Show uh, podcast, definitely email me and um, hit me up on Twitter at I am Ballhawk, Instagram, I am Ballhawk, and Facebook, Amaya Hawkins. Until next time, man. Good as the enemy are great. Be great in everything that you do, baby. <laughs> oh, man, that was terrible. <laughs> Hold on. <clears throat> <laughs> Man, I'm getting old. I'm hoarse. Never mind. I'll let y'all. <laughs> you know where you sitting at. Like. <laughs> I want the whole world spin my record. Shero, the hoodie styles, check game, stay free records. Ho! Show the girl for the death in a massaging. Bad news, even be massaging. I got a fitted head. I be massaging Pinky rings on my finger, I massaging I got a speedboat concert cause I massage I coming through about a whole account of large I be massaging, I be massaged I'm coming through with Cadillacs and massaging Yeah, I post them constantly massaging I got GPS, I be massaging I catch coke with a bitch cause I massaging I like a macaroni plate, I be massaging Even oodles and noodles, I be massaging Trid out the ghetto, cause I massaging I got ice around my neck cause I massaging I even gold teeth, I massaging A pinky ring iced out cause
be massaging. Your big two. I be massaging. I be massaging. I be massaging. I got a GPS stern with massaging. Whole shit road chain be massaging. I got a Uzi. I be massaging. I got a trail gauge pump. I massage. I got a hundred thousand. I massage. I ain't broke. I be massaging. I stay paid. I be massaging. I stay late. I be massaging. I hit the poop all night cause I'm massaging. She wanna come through loaded and massage. Whole cheese, we massage. Bad new party costly massage. Ain't no joke, I be massaging. Even the bacon and eggs, I be massaging. Huh? Polo shirts, Santo Adidas, I be massaging. I love you, sweetie cake. Spin my record, let me give you the game. Oh, how to get rich. Take a penny, and flip a penny, then 40 billion, huh, why, I be massaging, what, car stern wheel, I be massaging, the whole, the whole label of the state free records in the VA, oh, we be massaging, that's how my money shot.